Cornyn say? Senator Cornyn. Thank you, Mr. Sen I'm Chairman. Sorry. Hold on just a second. I'm sure. sorry. Senator Cornyn just returned. Sorry. S Senator Cornyn? No problem. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Smith, you talked about the uh, increase in the number of African Americans who purchased firearms, including African American women, in the recent past. What do you attribute that to? Thank you for the question, uh, Senator. It, it's multifaceted, but the one overriding thing that I'm seeing from my perch as the president of the organization is that black women, like all Americans, feel that they need to be able to protect themselves. They're not waiting for some guy on a white horse to fly in and, and save them. They want to be able to protect themselves. If someone breaks into their home at 2 o'clock in the morning, they don't have the time to tell the robber or someone who's breaking their home, hold on, wait a second, let me call the police. They have to be able to deal with that threat right then and there, and that's what they're doing. Women in mass are taking upon themselves to be very independent and self-reliant, and they are purchasing firearms. Where do you live? I live outside of Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. Are you familiar with the fact that last year alone uh, there were 836 homicides in Chicago? I understand Chicago is a very uh, interesting place in terms of violence, yes. Do you have an opinion whether that violence is predominantly caused by criminal street gangs? I've talked about this many times in many conversations and interviews. If we're really serious about helping poor folks, and let's be specific, we're talking about poor black and brown folks, give them jobs, take away super incarceration of, of them at an earlier age where they have two or three felonies by the time they're 23 and 24 years of age, give them a, the ability to go out and secure employment. Those folks out there are doing what anyone else would do if you can't find a job. They'll sell drugs, they'll beat people up, they'll do whatever it takes to, to take care of those babies that they have at home, and they have kids at home. But we have to, as a, as a country, to, to save them is to do some, something other than say, well, those guys are bad, let's just throw them in jail, when again and again more and more are coming like them. We have to think holistically to get a solution. And for me, my personal belief, and I'm not a, a scholar like some of the folks on this, on this table, but I'm a black man who's 63 years of age has been in this country for a long time. And if you give folks employment, if you give them a reason to buy into the American dream, like all of us have been able to, to do to a certain extent in this room, you'll see dramatic changes in people's behaviors and what they believe and what they don't believe in. Thank you for your um, explanation of what an assault rifle is in reality. It is a semi-automatic rifle, correct? That is correct. And uh, is an AR-15 the only type of semi-automatic rifle on the market? There's a, a multitude of guns. I mean, there's so many manufacturers out there you know, building guns. It's, it's, you have a lot of choices. Um, but one thing I wanted to point out that, you, that I brought up in, my, in my, my statement, when you pull the trigger on a AR, it is no different when you pull the trigger on a pistol or shotgun. Only one bullet comes out. Well, that's an important point because I think a lot of people are under the misimpression that, uh, that it's an automatic weapon, for example. That is correct. In, in terms of the mechanism by which a semi-automatic rifle works, is it in principle any different from, let's say, a semi-automatic uh, pistol or other uh, semi-automatic weapon? The similarities are pretty, pretty even in terms of the, the and I'm not a, a gunsmith and I'm not a person that puts together guns, but when you buy a, a pistol or you're buying a, a shotgun, the mechanism to pull the trigger is relatively the same. One pull of the trigger will, reduce, will produce one bullet coming out of, the, out, of the, out of that particular gun. So if Congress were to take up the uh, suggestion of banning assault weapons, a semi-automatic weapon, is there any reason um, in principle why that same ban would not apply to other types of firearms? I'll say this, and I appreciate the answer, the question, Senator. I say this a lot to my folks. Gun rights and gun violence are two separate conversations and two separate events. But what happens when we have this deeply passionate conversation, we merge those two, and we refuse to look at the nuances. To me, if we're really serious about helping folks, stop looking at restriction after restriction after restriction, law after law after law after law. It's obvious. You can throw 100 laws on that wall right there, and I can fill this room up with a whole bunch of folks that back my position. But we need to look at what's going to really solve the issue, and that's looking at the human condition. And that's what we're all failing to do in this room right now. 
People are hurting, people are scared, and people are in trouble. You're familiar, aren't you, with the fact that 60% of the gun deaths in America are suicides? Are you yes. aware of that? Sir? Yes, I am, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Feinstein. 